skin effect describes the tendency for high frequency currents to be near surfaces of conductors. Here's the experiment. The section where essentially one dimensional magnetic diffusion occurs is here. By making the conductor long in the y direction, we provide enough length for the current distribution to become primarily dependent on x over the middle cross section. To avoid an influence of the magnetic core on the field distribution here at the center, we've placed it to one end. This transverse probe can be inserted so that it samples the vertical magnetic field intensity over the span of the conductor. The field component normal to the flat face is measured. The slit is little more than large enough for the probe. The top trace is the current in the primary of the transformer, the driving current. The bottom trace is the probe signal, the magnetic flux density. As we pull the probe out, we see the field distribution with X. The frequency is 60 hertz. Here we're at three centimeters half the slab thickness. It appears that the decay is somewhat more rapid than linear. So it looks like the skin depth at 60 hertz is less than the thickness of the aluminum. Here's a prediction of the field decay with distance from the left edge of the conductor. This curve is for 60 hertz. In going from zero to one centimeter, here on the 60 hertz curve, we should see the field decay by 40%. What we measure decays to about 50% of its original value. Remember, the skin depth is inversely proportional to the square root of the frequency. So if we increase the frequency to 240 hertz, four times the frequency, the skin depth is half as much, and the decay should be more rapid. This is the decay at 60 hertz. Here, we're at one centimeter. Here, we're at three centimeters. Now, we raise the frequency to 240 hertz. This is the decay at 240 hertz. One centimeter, three centimeters. The decay at one centimeter and 240 hertz plots like this. These are additional data points. Here's the measured decay at 240 hertz. Here at 60 hertz. The discrepancy is probably due to the finite length of the aluminum in the direction of current circulation. Our one-dimensional theory strictly applies only where the currents have had sufficient development length.
When the skin depth is short compared to the conductor thickness, the current distribution takes the form of a wave. We've been observing the decay of this wave. There's also a phase shift with X caused by the propagation of this diffusion wave into the conductor. By looking at the probe signal on an oscilloscope, we can see this phase shift as the probe is withdrawn. The top trace is the excitation current, the bottom one, the probe current, synced to the excitation current. The frequency is 240 hertz. So as the probe is withdrawn, the field decays rapidly. To see the phase shift associated with the propagation, let's put the probe signal on top of the driving signal. Watch the position of a peak in the probe signal relative to that of the driving current as the probe is withdrawn. As the probe is pulled into the conductor, it measures a field that is increasingly delayed in phase. The magnitude of the magnetic diffusion wave decays exponentially into the conductor with a decay length that is the skin depth. The phase shift shows that the wave has phases that propagate into the conductor.